In this video, I want to talk about the different type of messaging options available under the VBOT Visual Automation Builder. VBOT supports three types of messaging uh, options, emails, SMS, or browser push notifications. They all can work together in a nice, you know, harmonious way. They could be completely independent from each other. And one thing to note is that the method of delivery, the compliance, the unsubscribe, the tracking is completely different between each one of these channels. Um, in terms of how you can map it out, I just created this sample here that uh, these are three different workflows that are date based. They don't really wait for an engagement. I'm just going to tell it on that day and time, send an email versus send an SMS versus send a browser push. So it, it's almost like a broadcast in a sense. <clears throat> okay. Now I can also do something like this, like browser push notification and SMS at the same time within the same sequence if that's my intention. Or to take it even one level up, um, or just to show you the flex flexibility in this, um, in this builder, I can actually do it this way. I can go up and down instead of going to the right. So the difference here is that a person will go to send an email on this particular point, they will branch out in three ways and they will continue. So however you like to build it, it's really up to you. This is your playground um, for you to work with. Okay. All right. Let's uh, break down some of these options. One of them is the send email. I double clicked it so I can configure it. From the drop down, I will choose all the email templates that I created. Let's go ahead and create one on the go. And you'll notice my tab stayed idle, but I also have a new one that just opened up for me to configure. Now I did cover a session on email marketing, so you can just call this testing S1, labeling super important, and I'll show you why in a second. Subject line, thank you, and I can personalize it. This is preheader. I love preheaders because you can use that additional real estate and you know send people these catchy things which show up right in this view, right? Below the subject line. From reply to, then I can go to my design options. And I want you to note here, I'm not creating an email campaign like I did in the previous module. This is just an email design process, including the configuration. So you'll notice here I have a target step and you'll notice on the top I am under the automated messages options. Okay. Now here I can either choose a theme, I can recycle a previous template, I can recycle an automation and even go back to my previously created campaigns to choose a sample that I've made. Okay. Of course I can create a new design and I can even make, make it a very basic editor. This is the naked HTML format that I always preach about for automation. So if I do that, this is not our full visual builder. This is a very basic, it looks like it's going off from your email type of uh, drip. Okay. Feel free to configure this. Make sure you're spam compliant by including your address on the bottom. Okay. The options to unsubscribe are also available here. And of course, you have the options to include short codes within this email. Save. I can do my inbox testing and all. Here I can go down to activate UTM tracking. Very important if you're doing some attribution. And that's it. Save. Okay, I did exit and go back to the automated messages section, but I still have my automation ready right here. Okay. If I refresh this, because now the drop down is not picking up on the new template, this is going to immediately show up my testing as one. And the proper naming will obviously make a difference. So if you have one or two emails, it's not a problem. But if you grow and you have dozens and dozens of these emails, just by the using the proper naming, you can always recycle, you can find what you're looking for easily. Okay. Now, allowing multiple entry from the same contact, this means if you have an option to someone fill out form to be um, to receive this email multiple times you can switch to yes 
and this will allow them to get that message over and over. This prevents any duplicates in, in, in case you have this option of multiple submission on the same form. Okay. Now, in terms of the Twilio, if I double click it, it's the same exact process. I can go ahead and create one from scratch. It took me to the same automated messaging section. I can give it a name. I don't have anything connected. I would have to click on here, connect Twilio, and simply follow the flow. Okay. We do have two types of messaging services or two types of uh, APIs available under Twilio. One of them is just a regular number or messaging service. It's almost like a folder with a bunch of numbers. So I highly recommend you explore both of these options. Okay. Now on the back, what you can do in the messaging, you can include emojis like you do with emails. You can include names of people also just like you do with emails. So we really took our personalization into another level to allow you right, to create this cross-channel personalized experience. Okay. Any link you include in here will also be tracked automatically. You can add an opt-out option, which is reply stop to opt-out. And by the way, if they reply start, Uh, will begin the process or resubscribe, but this, uh, this is irrelevant at this point. Here I can choose to activate UTM tracking again, attribution directly from SMS. And then I can attach a file to make it an MMS. Just make sure the file is optimized and it's not too big. And I can even send tests to myself. Very easy. Okay. Once I create the message here, it should go in the background under my automated messages. And here I can actually manage the different types of messaging that I've created. I didn't create one because I don't have my connected account. Uh, but if it has been created, I can double click it, refresh, and now it will show on here. Finally, browser push. These are messages that show up on your browser directly, regardless where you are logged into email on the client website. Um, they're all all the same. And it follows very similar DNA to the SMS with a little more flexibility. So here I can give it a name. This is web push S1. I have to choose where I'm activating this. Am I doing this on my website? If I activated web push there or on my landing pages where I activated web push. And I have a session on how you can activate web push notifications on your landing pages. I'm going to give it a title. Uh, the title could be Thank you, and look, personalized. I really love personalization. So I can do proper to capitalize the first letter. I can have fallbacks, all that good stuff. I can add icons if I want by either going to my library, searching animated GIF, or stock photos. Destination URL, this is my main CTA. So I can go ahead and just redirect people to the blog. And this is almost like the body of the email message, which could be, thank you for your time watching these uh, videos. Okay. Also personalization. So I'll let you personalize notification titles and messages as well. Okay. There's an advanced option for coupon codes, which will generate a unique dynamic coupon. And I have a couple of videos on that in my uh, workflow video, which is available in one of the modules as well. Okay. This is probably a very, uh, very good option for brick and mortar, and it's also available in SMS and on email. Now, this message will look like this. And if I click it, it should take me to my destination URL. A very basic and very efficient way to communicate with your customers. Now there's a tab here called advanced options. This is not available or supported on all browsers. So you have to just risk having a chunk, not seeing it the way you configured here, but not to worry because what they will see is the default version like I just showed you. Okay. But here, what that does, it's going to create some sort of a header. Let's say I have, uh, I don't know, this logo. 
a button one and you can activate uh, two buttons actually so it will look like this thank you or this one is no and again I'm just choosing random stuff here um, all right let's test it and you can see how it looks like okay now I have three CTAs the main body this button and this button it's not supported by all browsers as I mentioned so keep that in mind <clears throat> All right, and now I'm going to save and go back to my automation, refresh, and it's right there. Very easy, very basic. Now, in terms of the triggers, there are some options here you have to configure first as well. If I double click on specific date and I'm sending an email, you'll notice here, what is your target list, audience or web push? If you're sending an email to your master list, and for the emails part of things, I can do that. For SMS, it's also master list, given that you have on the master list an active phone field. For web push, however, just make sure that you choose the target domain. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, it shows me where I've already verified my web push notifications. In this case, I have a landing page with that. Okay. So each one of them require a little bit of configuration on the trigger side. Um, and if you combining them in this view, all I have to do is just go in here and choose on the bottom the recipient of the or the subscribers to the push notifications. Now, in terms of how you can manage these um, automated messages, you can access them from the automation, and from the top you have automated messages. You can see them all tagged in here between browser type, email type. You can see the analytics for every one of them. And I can even click on the drop down to copy these assets easily, preview them, attach them to a campaign group, adding them to a task, and a lot more.